The Word of God encourages us not to be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Are you filled with doubts of what tomorrow will bring? Are you troubled and feeling hopeless about tomorrow? Receive God's word today of hope and assurance of a better tomorrow. You will be changed. Good evening viewers, welcome to tomorrow. Let us pray. Father, we thank you very much because you are our Father. In you we have a Father, in you we have a rock, in, we, in you we have a shield, in you we have a backbone. We exalt your name for your compassion and your mercies and your love over our lives. Speak to us again, instruct us, and transform our lives by your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The word of God is light, the word of God is life. The word of God is life-giving. The word of God directs our lives and pathways. We've been talking about grace for a while, and last Saturday, you would recall, we talked about more on grace. Today, we're still looking at more on grace. So this is part two on more on grace. And what have we said about grace? Grace is God treating you as though you never sinned. Grace is God given to you things you do not deserve and things you never could have deserved, but God gave you those things regardless. Now, God gave us Christ. We did not deserve Christ. A man that is born of a woman was born in sin, conceived in sin, and is a sinner. You know, we inherited sin on the earth, but God gave us his only begotten son. The Bible says God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we're yet sinners, not after we became good, but while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's grace. And the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, the book of Titus tells us. So that grace of God that has appeared unto all men is Christ Jesus. Now we have said, whatever grace makes, faith takes. So whatever grace makes available, faith will take. Now more on, on grace. We have responsibilities in grace. We have responsibilities under grace. And the first responsibility is this, we must grow in grace. We must grow in grace. To grow is to develop over time. We must grow in grace. Let's look at the scripture there as we talk about growth in grace. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. 2 Peter chapter 3, 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forevermore. We are to grow in grace. We are not to be static or stagnant in grace. We are to develop in grace. Grace has given us the opportunity to spread our wings. It is our duty to be planted. Listen, a plant cannot grow if it is not grounded. So the more grounded we are in Christ, the better we'll grow. So a constant watering, when you have a plant that is grounded, it must be watered as well. So constant watering produces growth. Now, the watering that we're talking about here is the watering of God's word. As we nourish our lives with the word of God on a daily basis, we grow in grace. We grow in the power of God, in the mercy of God. We grow in soundness. We grow in wellness. We grow in peace. We grow in victory. We enjoy all the goodness of the Father because that is what grace represents unto us. So constant watering. Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. Let's see that. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that you've been rooted and grounded in love. If we are not rooted and grounded in love and love is God and love is also Jesus, we can grow in grace. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the length and breadth and depth and height and to know the love of Christ with passion knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. When we are filled with all of the fullness of God, the workings of grace become reality in us. But first, we must be rooted, we must be grounded in grace. Number two thing, responsibility of ours under grace is this. We are not to receive the grace of God in vain. Grace must never be received in gray, in vain. First Corinthians 15 and verse 10. Let's read quickly. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. So Apostle Paul was saying, I did not receive it in grace. What did he do? But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So not receiving grace in vain means uh, carrying a sense of responsibility under grace. Uh, being faithful to your assignment under grace. The something about grace. Grace is assignment specific and there is always grace for your place. When you locate your place, grace will help you to function maximally in that place. There will be no struggles. With grace, you should not struggle. But locate your place because grace is assignment specific. See you again next week. Till then, God bless you. Bye-bye.
We believe you have been blessed. Join us at 9 a.m. tomorrow at Vinebrand Church, Queen School Road, Abata Giari, for a life-changing experience in our glorious worship service. We are confident that with Jesus, your tomorrow will be better than today. Come now with us and we will do thee good. God bless you.